Hi, I'm going to start off by saying I did not know what to title this video because we have a lot going on. We have Harbor Freight Engines. We're going to turn a chemistry lesson into a running engine. We have 3D printed pistons. We have general shenanigans and unbridled chaos, as we usually do. Maybe it doesn't do it when it burns. Honestly, I'm super excited about this project, so let's get into it. Let's start with the motor. This is a 79cc Predator Harbor Freight motor. Uh, it was the cheapest one they had, the only one they had. So if you were looking for a 79cc Predator motor at the Tempe Harbor Freight, I bought the last one and I'm sorry about that. This one also got rained on because it sat in my truck uh, last night and it rained last night. So, oh well. Anyways, let's get it open. Oh, instructions. Some styrofoam. Let's not mix that with the gasoline. I'm going to add some oil. Does not need that much um, for everybody who's using this as a guide on how to set up their Harbor Freight engine. Um, it's not that much. This thing's adorable. I can just like pick it up and carry it around. This thing's cute. Hey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually set it outside. I'm gonna let it run for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, 30 minutes to an hour. I said, I think the break-in period's supposed to be like an hour. And then we're going to drain the fuel out of it and run the carb dry. And we're going to do some data logging. Uh, the main things that I want to get is how long it runs uh, with a set amount of fuel. So that should give us some good base numbers there. And I also want to grab engine temperature. I want to find a set point. I have a temp gun. And as it runs through the set amount of fuel, I want to figure out what temperatures we reach. It's a fairly cool day today, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's supposed to be fairly consistent all day as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, go from there, and then we'll start doing some experimentation. While that's cooling down out there, and before we drain gasoline, let's take a look over here. So what are we actually talking about here? Well, to start off, we're talking about gasoline. So when gasoline burns, it needs gasoline, it needs oxygen, and then it makes CO2 and H2O. Uh, in fact, it needs 12 and a half parts air to one part fuel. What we're looking at today is called N-butyl acetate. And if we balance out the burning of butyl acetate in the same way, we see we get eight parts air to one part fuel. So it's actually fairly close. Because N-butyl acetate is an isomer, uh, there's a few other butyl acetates with the same structure, but they are arranged differently, uh, namely tert butyl acetate is another one. Isobutyl acetate is another one there. But for this video, I'll refer to it as butyl acetate, but it's just N-butyl acetate. So why butyl acetate? Well, I came across a paper written earlier this year in conjunction with Cornell and Auburn University in the Biosciences Division titled Combustion of N-Butyl Acetate Synthesized by a New and Sustainable Biological Process in Comparisons with an Ultra-Pure Commercial N-Butyl Acetate Produced by Conventional Fisher Esterification. Um, <laughs> that title is very long, but here's what it means. See, the process for synthesizing butyl acetate usually is to take butanol, the base, and sulfuric acid and acetic acid and run it through the Fischer esterification process, which then converts it into butyl acetate. And honestly, I can't explain it any better than the paper can. The production of N-butyl acetate by Fischer esterification consumes a comparatively high amount of energy and generates toxic wastes, as it is usually needs a strong acid, example sulfuric acid, as the catalyst which can be a waste product. 
That's actually not to say that butyl acetate isn't a natural product or isn't harmful. Uh, red delicious apples are actually the flavor compound in that. What makes it sweet is butyl acetate, and that's why butyl acetate has a sweet smell. Now, that article references the original article by Auburn University itself, titled Renewable Fatty Acid Ester Production in Clostridium. I'm pronouncing that wrong, but here's how it's spelled. <laughs> Uh, I, I may be pronouncing it right, I have no idea. I just want to jump in here really quick and say this is one of the most difficult papers I've actually ever read. Uh, it takes a lot of work to get through. Um, so if anything's just a little bit off, refer back to the original article for the probably more correct information. Um, that was written by the Department of Biosystems Engineering at Auburn, and I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> So they're probably right if I get something wrong. But this is my understanding of the process. So according to the article, they're taking Clostridia, which I'm still not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly, but it's a form of bacteria that will die if it's exposed to, to oxygen. And most notably, it's not, it does not have anaerobic respiration, which means that it doesn't use oxygen to convert fuel into energy. From here, they're taking advantage of the natural pathways that the Clostridia already have built into their system, picking the best ones that have the ability to produce as much as possible and have a resistant to solvents at the end of the process. They're still using esterification, it's just catalyzed by lipases. So this already looks pretty good because we have a burnable substance produced in a clean, low energy cost environment and we have a burnable fuel with similar octane ratings to gasoline, but I want to take it one step further. Interestingly enough, N-butyl acetate has a cool flame temperature of about 225 degrees Celsius, which is very, very cold. If we can create an engine that runs cool enough, A, dropping NOx levels a lot, and still runs on a similar production of energy to mass, i.e. it doesn't burn so quick that it becomes inefficient to carry, then we can go into the second part of my idea, which is plastic pistons. Because if we can create an engine that burns cold enough that we can use polymers and plastics as a piston, then the manufacturing cost of engines goes significantly further down, therefore making things a little bit more efficient and making things more cost effective. So this is kind of a two part in that A, can it burn cold enough? And that's why I'm measuring the temperatures of the engine as it's burning. And can we get it to burn cold enough and can we get it to run with a plastic piston and not completely explode? That's the question we're asking. So I already broke fuel line, uh, so I guess we're just gonna let it drain for a minute. Um, N-butyl acetate was actually a little bit difficult to get, uh, mainly not in 55 gallon drums, which I'm not that committed. Uh, it is the main ingredient in uh, nail polish thinner. So I called up Sally Beauty and tried to order uh, a gallon of nail polish thinner and they did not uh, want to sell me that. So I ordered some pure stuff out of a chemical supply in Texas. They shipped at UPS ground. So yeah, uh, I'm going to get the fuel drained and we're going to put a set amount of fuel back in. All right, we put 200 milliliters of fuel in there. We are going to run it until it's empty, which I don't know what that setting is, but um, it's set at about mid throttle and I'm just going to not touch it between each test and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, right now it's just a running gasoline engine, which is, which is what it's supposed to be. There's nothing changed there, but um, our starting temperature is 59 degrees. So, uh, it's actually a cold day in, in Phoenix. <laughs> We're going to take temperatures once every minute uh, until it stops running. Um, and that'll be a pretty good baseline. Probably going to need just a little bit of choke to get started. Thirty-four minutes. Thirty-four minutes on two hundred milliliters. That's too many. That's 
Anyways, uh, <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought it was. I was gonna, I was thinking like 15. Anyways, um, looking at the data, and I'll put it up on the screen and stuff, um, it goes up to temperature pretty quick. Um, a little bit of jumping around, but I think that's a great baseline for, I think it's 115 degrees Fahrenheit on that point. All right, um, I'm gonna make sure the engine's clear and then let's jump over the workbench. So this is pure N-butyl acetate. Um, I know that it's not going to, uh, Burma and O-rings are not going to live. Uh, it's not really a question of like, are they going to live? It's a question of how long will they live? I wanna make sure that it doesn't burst into flames because this is what's in all of the little O-rings in the engine uh, for the carburetor and stuff. My plan is, is to the, just richen up that carburetor a lot and see if we can get a consistent, we can get close. Um, if not, we'll have to come up with something else, but uh, that's, that's the plan right now at least, so. Hmm. It does have a bit of a fruity smell. Okay, I actually hope it doesn't dissolve the bucket, but we'll find out. Stuff's also a little bit expensive, so I'm not trying to waste a ton of it. These are professional tests developed on a closed course. It's not great, but they lived, so. All right, see if it'll run. Instead of dealing with mixture right now, all I did was I set uh, the choke half on, which accomplishes the same goal, so. Again, we'll do the measuring test a little bit later. I'm also lucky that my neighbors already look at me weird because I stand outside and just stare at an engine for 30 minutes while it just idles, so. Choke all the way on. This might work. <laughs> okay. Comically large syringe doesn't really do anything else. Good besides being, besides being comically large. Our dot is 61 degrees, so. That should be fine. We're, we were originally 51 on, or 59 on the other one, so should be okay there. And let's see what happens. Thirty-three minutes and forty seconds. That's fantastic. We'll get to temperatures in a moment, but like, even on its own, that's genuinely viable, huh? Um, and I mean, it's running great. And I mean, that 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 delta is probably down. I mean, that's a handset mixture. Granted, I'm sure they ship these motors with a a bit of a a, a bit rough of a mixture, anyways, on the gasoline side too. So. Who knows? Um, I really wish I had a dyno or a way to dyno this to see the horsepower changes, to see if it makes to see if it makes more or less power. All right, so temperatures. Uh, we are definitely cooler. It, butyl was hovering right around 105 compared to gasoline was about 115. I think we said we can run a line across that graph ignoring some outliers. Uh, it was a lot more consistent looking at those two graphs. Um, I am going to disassemble it and man, I was really hoping to see a lot more of a delta there as far as, as far as temperatures. That's not cold enough for a plastic, for anything, any plastic that I can make, you know? Um, it's just not, 
uh, it's it's a little bit that's a little bit toasty. I'm gonna take it apart. Let's let's go from there. All right, we have not let this cool down because of who we are as a person, so it's gonna be a little bit toasty, but that's okay. Um, I also don't have a head gasket for this, a replacement head gasket, so um, that's that's gonna be kind of a problem. I don't know why I expected this to have bearings, but I kind of expected this to have bearings. I don't know. That's interesting. So here's a piston. Um, I designed it to be an exact copy of the original. Uh, I originally went through and did some topology optimization, um, but to be completely honest, that's an entirely separate video. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on there. Anyways, this is printed out of ABS. I'm not completely sure that we're gonna be okay. Uh, this has a glass transition temperature of about 220 degrees Celsius, um, which I don't know, I'm interested to see, but uh, I think more of the high temp polymers and the high temp plastics will do a lot better. Um, but even the decrease in temperature that we saw yesterday is a great, is a great thing. So I'm gonna get this built, I'm gonna get it installed. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I had this piece of ABS soaking in the butyl acetate for a couple of minutes and it is, uh, it is gooey. Um, I think that might be our biggest problem. I mean, it, uh, a famous way of smoothing ABS is with acetone. Um, and I mean, this stuff's an ester, so it does not surprise me that, uh, that it does this. I'm still gonna try it. Maybe it doesn't do it when it burns. All right, it's back together, plastic piston. Let's fire it up and see what happens. Oil. All right, well, we'll find out on. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed that it wasn't able to run with the plastic piston, but uh, in another breath, I'm not because I want to do it right. I'm going to actually find a filament that can survive the temperature. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to print it on my printer, but uh, we're going to do some research and we're going to find it out. Um, other than that, I have an idea on how to put a temperature probe on the inside of the piston to actually get a good reading out of what temperatures we're seeing. So we're going to experiment around with that a little bit. Uh, other than that, the files are in the description below, well the file I guess. And feel free to mess around with this. I mean, be safe, but uh, this is some pretty cool stuff, and I'd love some outside input, and I'd love to see this uh, used a little bit more in the future. And as always, I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride on my mad science sometimes. It, uh, I, I'm glad you guys find it interesting. I sure do. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below, and thank you very much for watching. Welcome back to... Why doesn't that look framed right?